Welcome to this week's Clarion Energy News. I'm Elizabeth Ingram, Content Director for Clarion Energy. Here are the top three stories we've been following. Number three, the governor of the state of Wyoming in the United States has signed a law requiring Wyoming utilities to try to sell coal-fired power plants before decommissioning them. This law, aimed at keeping the coal facilities in business, says that if a new company buys a plant the power company wanted to decommission, the utility that sold the plant must buy back the power, even if a cheaper source is available. Republican Senator Dan Dockstader, who sponsored the legislation, says the bill was about protecting small communities with coal-fired plants. However, critics see the move as temporarily extending the life of outdated and costly coal-fired plants. Wyoming is the top coal mining state in the U.S., and Texas power producers are the biggest buyers of Wyoming coal. Number two, Venezuela is experiencing a countrywide power outage during which more than a dozen people have died. Reports differ, with some news agencies reporting power is starting to return to portions of the country, and others saying there is, quote, no end in sight to the blackout. The blackout struck during the peak of evening rush hour on Thursday, March 7th, and President Nicolas Maduro ordered schools and all government entities closed and told businesses not to open to facilitate work crews trying to restore power. AP reported that Venezuela's socialist government blamed the power failure on right-wing extremists taking order from, orders from the United States, including Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio, and said they were intent on causing pandemonium for several days, but offered no proof. Specifically, news agencies reported allegations that the blackout was caused by a cyber attack on the 10.3 gigawatt Guri hydroelectric facility, also called Simone Bolivar. However, Forbes said, quote, the reality is that Venezuela's blackout was most likely due to chronic underfunding of its electrical infrastructure and deferred maintenance, end quote. And now our top story, forget the border wall. Scientists with Purdue University instead proposed to build an energy park that spans the 1,954 miles of the border between the United States and Mexico to bring energy, water, jobs, and border security to the region. This enormous infrastructure project would be a complex train of solar energy panels, wind turbines, natural gas pipelines, and desalination facilities that would provide the desired border security by dint of their need to be well protected. Quote, in addition to physical security features, such as multiple levels of fencing, these pipelines and facilities would also have electronic sensors and drone surveillance, said Luciano Castillo, leader of the research consortium behind the proposal. This would allow areas for wildlife to continue to migrate while alerting officials to anyone crossing the border illegally, she said. Additionally, the connected energy parks would be an economic driver through construction of the facilities and the businesses that would be attracted to the region by cheap electricity and plentiful water resources. And coming up in July, our High Division International event will attract well over 3,000 hydroelectric power industry professionals to Portland, Oregon in the United States. I am pleased to announce that Pacificorp has signed on to be the host utility for Hydrovision. Pacificorp has nearly 11,000 megawatts of generating capacity from coal, hydro, wind, gas-fired combustion turbines, solar, and geothermal resources. Join us for this educational event July 23rd through 25th in Portland. That's it for this edition of Clarion Energy News. I'm Elizabeth Ingram. Thank you for watching.